Yo, the name is Alpern, and today we are going to just be quickly here taking a look at some of the stuff Relic today actually mentioned on their live stream where they discussed patch 1.6, uh, which is called something something Cobra or, or Snake, I don't really remember, and they discussed some of the new features like the surrender and automatic cooldown features, uh, as well as accolades, some of the, the mission select stuff for single player, uh, but also showcasing briefly the new maps that are coming in patch 1.6, as well as other quality of life features, such as a post game now instead of immediately throwing you out of the match, you're going to be able to view the battlefield. And I think that implementation is a lot better than it is in, for instance, Code 2, uh, because in Code 2, the match just continues playing, right? And you still have Fog of War, uh, which means you can't really check out like where where your enemy's units are or the, the exact positions towards the, the end game state. Uh, so I think this new feature is a lot better because then you can just, you know, check out the, 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 the overall battlefield and you'll get like a very, very cool uh, still picture of the, the final engagement that's going on. Say you're having like an epic brawl towards the, the, the last VPs or something, you know, you're going to have that moment captured, uh, which is just really cool. Uh, of course very reminiscent of how other RTS games does it where it just pauses and removes Fog of War and I personally prefer that way more than the Code 2 one where it just keeps playing. Uh, apart from all these features, they also showcased the two new battle groups, one for Brits and one for DAC. Uh, here you have the British battle group and they also uh, briefly showcased some of the units and the abilities. So here's the British one, it's the British Forces Australian Defense. Uh, we got here the infantry light, the Australian light, sorry, infantry section. Uh, it's an infantry unit that can build some sort of sandbag wall. Uh, and yeah, it's a, it's a light infantry squad. Uh, I know Mirage Fla, also known as Darren, uh, was talking about how, how this unit is, is supposed to be a long range fighter but he also does a lot better in close range compared to your normal sections so that's a very interesting unit it will be available to call in instantly at the start of the game they mentioned so that's going to be really cool as well you're going to have an option now for your main lines compared to simply going uh, sections uh, which is what ukf has been doing so far since they don't really have any other tier zero call-ins then they talked about the two-pounder anti-tank gun, uh, which is like a light anti-tank gun. I think this is quite reminiscent of the Baby 80 gun from uh, Co2. But while the Baby 80 gun from Co2 was generally quite not that super strong because it struggled to penetrate a lot of vehicles, this one has an ability which not only increases its penetration rates, um, but it also slows the vehicle, so it has a bit of that pack 40 from Ko2 where you get a stun shot off, which sounds extremely powerful on a uh, on a on a tank gun like this, because since it is a baby 80 gun, it probably also has a very fast rate of fire, and Ko3 in general is just a lot about light vehicles so if you have a light vehicle and then you get slowed by an 80 gun you know that's an 80 gun with basically an included snare so you can maybe follow it up with your your own snare from your sections or you'll simply just die to the two pounder uh, rate of fire which is probably going to be quite a bit faster than a six pounder i, I would also just like to mention here that it's quite funny to me how like stunning and slowing is seems to be the, like the British theme in general, like British has the most stuns out of all the factions I believe, off the top of my mind, you have like the, the Stuart tread shot and you have like the the what they call the guards stun ability, they just have a bunch of them uh, and now they get another one in the two pounder so I don't know maybe there's some combination here that might be extremely strong where you like slow with your two pounder so that your steward gets in range and then you get tread shot dead and then you have guards just coming up and you know melting your vehicles i don't know uh, anyway it seems very strong and it arguably seems stronger than the six pounder um i imagine it's of course going to get buffed by the by the support weapon training as well so it seems very strong uh, as well as the defensive tactics here, uh, which is the exclusive choice. You either pick the, the anti-tank gun or you go the emplacements, uh, which is a bow force, uh, very reminiscent of the bow force gun in Code 2, as well as the 17 pounder emplacement, which is similar to the 17 pounder emplacement in Code 2, or like the, the Flak 88 that the, the Wehrmacht Luftwaffe has. 
So really cool stuff that some new options here for the UKF that they haven't had this far. We also have vehicle over repair and this is a basically a passive ability in that allows your engineers to over repair your vehicle so they actually have a higher total HP uh, which is just very cool. And then we got the hold line here, uh, which basically just buffs all of your emplacements, all of your support weapons, uh, as well as heals them. So this is basically uh, the code to brace ability, uh, but it's global and it also heals. So if you ask me, that's going to be extremely frustrating to play against because I just hated brace from code 2. Uh, but here we have a global brace that also heals, you know, uh, hopefully this is quite expensive so you can't use this uh, every every minute or so, I don't know. Um, but yeah, <laughs> we got hold the line. Then up here we have probably the coolest ability of this battle group. It's sort of similar to the, uh, as the way they explain it, it's sort of similar to the Age of Empires trading. If you're familiar with it, uh, you're going to have like a trading card of some kind that goes to a specific uh, objective or a point that you you tell which point it goes. So if it goes like, like a fuel point, you'll get fuel. Or if you go to a muni point, you'll get munitions. Um, but depending on how far away that is, you'll get more resources. So you like, if you're on a very large map, you may, you know, you're gonna want to send it very far and then you're gonna have to protect this versus the enemy. Um, because if the enemy destroys it, they actually plunder the resources, which is just such a cool mechanic. We haven't really had anything like this in Kobe before. Uh, so I'm very excited about this. It's just, it's just fun, you know, it looks like you, you create a small little mini objective in the in the game, you know, a mini game within the game, which is just, it's just cool stuff. Um, and I can already see in team games how you, you like build a bunch of emplacements and then you send the supply trucks. Um, you know, maybe you get munitions, you can use the charged creeping barrage, which they showed off. Um, so yeah, there's some wild synergy here for team games, I believe. And the reinforced resource cache here is basically as the passive, all your resource caches will be cheaper, but they will also be tankier. Uh, I'm not a bit sure about this one, it seems very odd. Uh, I also think, you know, considering RNC has something extremely similar, uh, I don't know why they don't just rehash that ability instead of doing a completely unique one. Honestly, I would have preferred if they just rehashed instead of doing like, I don't know, these weird st strange... I don't know, knockoffs of the same ability. Um, but yeah, it's a re reinforced resource cache. Uh, this, however, does compete with the artillery tripwire flare, uh, which seems to be like a booby trap from, uh, from DAC. Uh, but instead of just blowing up, it shoots up a flare. Uh, and then it, it the the base your 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 base artillery fires a single shell onto that point. So I don't know how RNG this will be. He mentions it's uh, they mention this is quite cheap. So it's probably cheaper than a normal mine, uh, which then makes it a lot cheaper than the the ambush booby traps um, because the booby traps costs what 50 munitions 60 munitions i don't remember off the top of my head they're not very good nowadays uh, but this one of course also provides that vision so a bit scary but uh, very interesting that's for sure and uh, we also have the archer tank destroyer uh, which just seems to be a super strong tank destroyer which Brits don't have, so that's that's good. I would have preferred personally to see this thing in the stock tech tree. I'm a bit sad that they went this route, but you know, it, it's there anyway. You have access to it, though you are going to have to lock yourself into a very specific battle group, which you will have for free, by the way. Both of these battle groups will be available for free uh, after the release of the patch on the 23rd of April. But again, I do feel like this vehicle probably should have switched positions with the Grant, because I feel like the Grant doesn't really offer that much that the the Matilda or the Crusader does, uh, doesn't, you know, sure it's a lot stronger, but you could just buff the, the other two if that was what you wanted. Basically what I'm trying to say is they're all three generalists and this is a very uh, specialized vehicle, which I think UKF in uh, in its final tier lacks. So yeah, the very cool stuff. 
and I am real excited to play with this because I feel like because you know as Brits you, you really only have Indian to play with unless you want to call in spam uh, which is one of the the big downsides with those two battle groups because all you do is you really just stay in a low tier and you you spam the same vehicle over and over uh, meanwhile Indian actually allows you to go to you know play the entire faction roster in a quite cool way uh, so I'm hoping this will let you do that as well, but not only that, it also expands your options. So uh, really looking forward to this one. Next up, we have the DAC one, which is Battlefield Espionage. So it, themes here is like spying and camouflage and stuff. So we got the, the Funk Panzerwagen, uh, which is like... They, they were talking about how you can upgrade your 250s to this. Uh, so it's like, you know, you got the, the, the 250 slash 9 upgrade, you got the mortar half track upgrade, and this is a third one. Uh, I think you can build it mutually uh, without getting a 250 first, but this is one of the new uh, upgrade uh, options if you pick this battle group. Uh, so what this does is it passively generates you resources it gives you munitions over time by simply existing on the battlefield uh, but not only that they showcased how it can uh, capture territory and any nearby infantry to this uh, will get camouflaged which is you know that's a very strong tool considering you get the first strike bonus uh, so here you can see this poor uh, australian light infantry completely getting shooed up there by the assault grenadiers because you know they get that first strike bonus uh, so very cool i'm I, you know imagining you have to play around this i don't know the range of it but i imagine it can't be super large um, but yeah other things it can do is it can construct Goliaths. Yes, the Goliaths are back in Company Heroes 3. Uh, you're going to be able to create those with this Funk Panzer Wagon. So you're going to have to look out for that. I'm not sure how powerful they're going to be. I, you know, if we if we imagine demos, demos are quite strong right now. So well, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. And the Funk Panzerwagen not only can make Goliaths, but it can also plant mines, and not only normal mines. But it can also plant the Teller Mines from the Guastatori battle group, which are extremely powerful, very similar to the USF M6 Mines. Uh, and it can also construct these beacons. So it has a lot of roles here. It's basically an engineer that gives you resources, but that can't repair, um, that also camouflages. It, it's a bit all over the place, but it seems quite useful. Then we have two beacons here, which are exclusive choice. We got the subterfuge beacon, which actually steals resources from your opponent. So uh, you're going to have to want to look out for this. And uh, they mentioned that specific units will be able to detect these uh, from further away. They, they showcase the, the scouts detecting this from quite a far distance. So I don't know how strong this is going to be. I can think of some map like on, on Pashino. Pashino has these very large areas, so you could probably find some very sneaky locations to put these beacons and if your opponent doesn't notice that that's less resources for him and more resources for you in that sense it's very reminiscent of the the ko one vampire wagon and they they had a very similar mechanic in ko one i'm in your sector stealing your resources i'm in your sector stealing your resources in your sector stealing your resources hey I'm stealing your resources, and you don't know where I am. Where am I? I'm stealing your resources, that's where I am. So all you Ko-1 fans out there can rejoice. You can do this in Ko-3 as well now. So if we take a look at the other beacon here, we got Intel Disruption Beacon. Uh, this beacon does not steal resources, however it does reveal all of nearby enemy infantry on your minimap and in the Fog of War. Uh, so it's basically a map hacking beacon, but not only that, it also provides camouflage to all nearby infantry, no matter if you're in cover or not, no matter what type of infantry it is, so 80 guns, machine guns, panzer grenadiers, no matter what it is, it also gives camo. And if we take uh, Pacino here as an example, if you put this on your safe fuel in the middle, uh, you're, it's probably going to cover the, the entire middle section, right? So uh, I can see this being extremely strong on certain maps such as Pacino again. The anti-tank incendiary munitions basically 
just passively buffs all your AT guns, so they also do a damage over time when you hit a vehicle, uh, which is quite powerful by itself, but then you can also take into consideration that you can cloak those AT guns, and this one also improves the damage of all your snares, so Panzergrandier snare will do more damage, so you know, I imagine it's going to be a lot easier to also hit those snares considering your Panzergrandiers will most likely be camouflaged, um, but it's competing with a very strong choice here as well. Another passive here, completely free of course, as the battlegroup passives generally are, uh, where it just improves your first strike bonus, which is that first stat bonus you get whenever you come out of camouflage. Uh, so your, your, your first shots will do a lot more damage, um, from usual first strike it will just be more, uh, but not only that, the first strike bonus also remains for a longer duration, which just sounds super strong. Plunder is an ability which allows your infantry to basically scavenge vehicle wrecks on the battlefield. Say you destroy a vehicle, you can then scavenge it, uh, but instead of getting resources, which is usually what scavenge abilities has been doing in the Company Heroes franchise, your unit that is scavenging gets weapons and this depends a bit different on different units. So here you can see the ability in use. It seems Panzer Grenadiers get something like an LMG or a bar. The Assault Grenadiers get a Thompson or an STG, which is, sounds very strong to me. But what it seems even stronger to me is that Panzer Jaegers gets another soft anti-tank weapon, which, you know, they already have two anti-tank rifles, so they can either get a third one or a Sook, which just sounds probably what you're always going to want to prioritize, because that just sounds very strong. You're basically turning that unit into a super anti-tank squad, uh, which makes a lot more sense than get, upgrading the, the LMG on it, right? And then the Panzer Pioneer either gets a G43 or an LMG, which is probably your, going to be your last pick, if ever. Maybe if all your other squads already has a weapon, you go for that. But even then, uh, I don't know if these will actually take up a weapon slot. I assume they do, so... Do you want that over a flamethrower? I don't know, do, I think they do have two weapon slots, so you can probably get a flamethrower and a G43. Maybe that's quite powerful even, uh, but generally speaking, you're probably gonna want sweepers above those options because it improves your repair speed. I I'm not sure. Uh, either way, this is very strong. Transfer Depot, which is competing with Plunder, is basically, again, similar to the UKF one, upgrading your resource caches. However, this one does it a bit differently. Uh, instead of just being some stat boost or making them cheaper, it actually allows you to sell the very resources that you put this on for manpower. Now, this to me sounds quite strong, to be honest, because say you put it on a fuel, this still acts as like a, a resource cache in, reg in general, so you're still going to get an increased amount of resources, and then you can sell that, or rather convert it for manpower, and that in general is just this extremely manpower hungry faction, and say you stay in tier 2 building a bunch of 8 rads or a bunch of stug -Ds, you know, very cheap fuel cost vehicles, then you're going to be floating a lot of fuel which you then can convert into manpower. And you know, th this thing by itself is basically going to pay for itself eventually. I not sure exactly how much you get, they did mention that if you put this on a high fuel you're going to get a lot more manpower than if you put it on a low fuel, uh, so I imagine this is probably a bit map specific, certain maps this is probably going to be a lot better than on other maps. And then we have disruption operation here, which uh, basically just makes your opponent have less vision or something. I'm not entirely sure how this ability works. We're just gonna have to wait and see when this releases. And then you have Firestorm, and this is essentially just an incendiary barrage. I don't think they touched anything else what it, this does, um, but it seems to just be like a, a flame bombing run or a flame barrage, which, you know, other factions has ac had access to that, other factions in other games have had uh, access to that, so a very sexy name for just a, a firebomb strike. Um, still very cool though, if you steal a lot of resources, I imagine you're going to want to be able to use this quite a lot, and it also does counter the the upcoming emplacements right fire damage should counter the emplacements so 
there's a, a counter already for those and I imagine the Australian lights might be able to detect some of these camo units or beacons as well uh, and then we have the operation scorpion here which they touched upon which is basically some sort of global ability that turns all your vehicles camouflaged looked a bit silly in the in the the, the video they or the clip they showed where like there was a bunch of like slow rolling panzer free suddenly appearing out of nowhere i don't know how fun this battle group <laughs> honestly that's my like my first impression is this going to be fun to fight against um i doubt it i like it, my mind immediately goes to fighting commandos in company heroes 2 specifically because of how strong commandos were in that game and you know being on the receiving end it was never fun and i feel like it's always been like a a net negative for both players like piloting this is not as fun as annoying it is to face against so i am a bit worried on that end this does not seem very fun uh, if we go back to the the australian one as well um you know all these emplacements just like we had in the the coastal battle group I'm a bit on the fence here whether or not this is what I wanted to see. Um, again, I was hoping we could have like some more grounded battle groups, uh, but most of the stuff here is still quite cool, I would say. It's just these mechanics that I imagine are just more fun to use than it is to face, which can be okay but if every battle group is like that you know it's going to be more like you you do your thing and your opponent does your thing and if you're on the receiving end of that thing it's just sad uh, so I, I don't know we'll have to see I guess it's always more fun to be on the winning side but e even if you win versus this will you have had fun it's arguable uh, so I don't know we'll have to wait and see until this releases on the 23rd Anyways, we don't know everything about all of these abilities quite yet. We only know what they gave us. So there might be some other stuff in here that's uh, very cool but hidden. So we're simply going to have to to take the long wait until they release. But yeah, I just wanted to briefly showcase to the, this to you guys. And yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys around. I'll of course also link the, the full stream of Relic. I'm sure they'll post it on YouTube as well. Uh, so you can find it in the description.